Today I'm going to show you how to set up active traction control using your FuelTech ECU. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and go to Map Options, and we're going to turn on our active traction control. Next, we're going to go to our inputs, and we're going to set up two wheel speed sensors. The first one is going to be wheel speed front left, and then we'll also do wheel speed rear left. Now, if you have an FT550 or an FT600, you can use the G meter as the front wheel speed reference. So you don't have to configure a front wheel speed sensor, but that only works from a validated two-step launch. So in this case, we're gonna do wheel speed based traction control. Next, after that, we're gonna scroll down and select our traction type. This car is rear wheel drive, so I'm gonna leave that selected, but you have the option for front or all wheel drive as well. Once we do that, we can click on each one of our wheel speed sensors and set up, we're using a white input, not FT CAN from a gear controller or OEM CAN for like a Corvette or a CTSV, something like that. Our wheel speed sensor is reading 25 teeth and our tire is a 17 inch rim, 245 width with a 45 side profile for the front and for the rear, also 25 teeth using a white input. It's a radial 15 inch rim, 275 width, with a 60 side profile. Once we've done that, we can go up and click active traction control. Now this is the main traction control screen that you'll see as soon as you click on active traction control. We have three options over here in the top left, time-based. This is for launching off the two-step and then having a time-based traction control plot. We have engine RPM based, and then we also have vehicle speed based. Today, we're gonna do vehicle speed based. Reaction level is how aggressively the traction control is going to act when there's wheel slip. So if you make this number too big, it's gonna be really aggressive and really choppy. Sometimes it can make the car hard to drive. And if you make this number too small, it can be really loose or hardly do anything. So you definitely have to tune this to your particular setup. Below that, we have the ignition retard and ignition cut. So we're gonna set this as minus 15. It's allowed to pull 15 degrees. And then we also have a 50% ignition cut. So it's allowed to do a 50% ignition cut. Next, we have minimum slip to activate the traction control. This is the minimum threshold for the traction control to actually start working. That way the traction control doesn't instantly turn on and then just bog the car down. Also, we have a minimum engine RPM, 4,500 RPM in this case. So as long as the engine is below 4,500 RPM, the traction control will not do anything. If it's above 4,500 RPM, it will. We also have a speed to activate. So some vehicles, you don't wanna have active traction control on as soon as you start rolling and you're above whatever RPM. This makes it so there's also a minimum speed that you have to be at before it will even do anything. You can also have a speed to deactivate the traction control. So if you're going 100 miles an hour and you wanna shut the traction control off so that it doesn't do anything anymore, you can do that. To allow the gear change to happen and maybe a little bit of wheel slip on the gear change if that's preferred, you can set that up here and then enable after validated launch time. So what this allows you to do is not turn the active traction control on until two seconds, for example. Uh, in my case, this car is gonna be driven on the street, so I don't wanna do that and it will be on all the time. Down here, we have the target slip table selection mode. You can have a dashboard button, you can have a gear based, an analog switch, an external button, uh, or an external button for the previous table. So you can have two buttons. And this allows you to change your target slip tables up to six different tables. So that way you can have really aggressive one and not as aggressive one all the way up to six different tables, or you can have a table for each gear up to 10 speeds. You have the enable function by, so you can have it always enabled, only on a validated launch, a button on the dashboard, an external switch or an external button. In my case, I'm gonna do always enabled. You have the input activation mode. If you're using one of the switches, you can choose whether it's activated by zero or 12 volts. You can have the ECU always start with the traction control on or always start with the traction control off when you have a button selected. And then we also have the status output signal. What this allows you to do is use an output on the ECU to trigger an LED or a light of some kind to let you know when the traction control is active. You might wanna hook this to like the dashboard light that looks like two tires spinning on your, on your factory dash or something, or maybe just have an external shift light that blinks when the traction control is going on, so that way you know the traction control is acting. Next, we have the vehicle speed-based target slip. You can see right here, this table is all pretty much 
blank or one number, that's because it's not set up yet. So I have a couple data logs here to show you. This one is a Corvette that we had. Uh, you can see this big red spike and then it kind of tapers down. That is our wheel slip from when the car was launched all the way until the car gained some speed. Also, we have a log from a front wheel drive car just to show you the same thing. This is when the car took off, it started spinning, and then eventually it kind of gained some speed and the slip started to go away. So what we'll do is you'll drive your car and you'll try and find this slip curve right here. And then you're gonna go ahead and plot that into your TPS versus tire slip percentage table. So that next time that you drive your car, you can manage the same curve or you can even make a reduced version of it. You can see here at the beginning, it's got like 700% slip and then 415, 87, seven, three, one, and then eventually it kind of hovers around one to 5%. So what we'll do here is we'll go in here and do our percent slip based off the TPS. And we'll do 750, for example, 500, 75, 30, 10, and then five. Then we can go here and copy this whole entire thing, click and drag all the way across, copy, put it here, paste it, and then we can hit M for multiply and multiply it by about 50%. So that way we have a 50% less slip target at 80% throttle. And then at 50% throttle, we can copy the one from 80%, copy, paste, M for multiply, and we can take another 50% away. That way, when the driver is driving the car, if it starts to spin and they start to lift their foot off the gas, the traction control gets more aggressive as their foot's rolling out. And then as the car gains control again, they can put their foot back in without having to let their th foot all the way off of the throttle. So that's pretty much it, guys. You've just set up active traction control, and I'll see you on the racetrack.